Hello and welcome back to A Slice of Physics. We're now ready to take a deep look at projectile motion. We will first recognize that projectile motion acts along both dimensions, x and y axes. And unlike the trick we used for solving motion along a ramp, where we rotated the axis and made it a one-dimensional motion, there is nothing we can do. Projectile motions are fundamentally two-dimensional motions. And having accepted that it is motion along two dimensions, we learn how to analyze projectile motion to determine key answers to questions we have about the motion. Let's first take a visual look at what projectile motion looks like, and then we will learn how to analyze it. So here's a ball that's lying on the ground, and let's say I launch it with an initial velocity in that direction. And let's call this initial velocity v, and in this example I've launched it at about a 45 degree angle to the horizontal. So what will it do? Well, it goes up and to the right, and then it reaches a maximum height and then comes down and to the right, like shown. So what I have shown here is the motion diagram of this ball, which shows its positions after equal intervals of time. Now, why does the ball move in this fashion? The reason it's curving back down and falling back onto the ground is because of the force of gravity, which results in an acceleration due to gravity. And as we know, acceleration due to gravity points straight down. So let's show it like that. You also see that the motion here is along two axes. It's moving up and down, and it's also moving to the right. So to analyze this, we got to adopt a set of coordinate axes, and the ones that works best for projectile motion is our standard coordinate axes of positive x value to the right and positive y value going upward, like shown here. And since you know that x and y axes are always perpendicular to each other, anything happening along one axis does not have any projection along the other axis. So the first key thing to remember about analyzing projectile motion is that the motion along the x and y axes are independent. And because of this, they can be analyzed separately from each other. So let's take a look at one axis at a time and see what's happening. The motion along the x direction is going to be influenced by the component of velocity along x direction, and the motion along y direction will be influenced by the y component. So here are the components of that velocity. I've got vx over here, and I've got vy over here. So looking at the y component, here's what's happening to the ball. As it goes up, I'm showing these lines here to guide our eye to see what's happening with this motion. We can see that initially it covers a lot of vertical distance in a given interval of time, and that distance keeps going down and down and down. That tells us that in the vertical sense, this ball is slowing down as it's going up. And that makes sense because I've got velocity pointing up, I've got the acceleration pointing down, and whenever we have acceleration that points opposite the velocity, you remember that the object slows down. And then what happens after it gets to the very top? As it's coming down, these lines now guide our eye and show us that as it's going down, it gets faster and faster and faster until it falls onto the ground. And that also makes sense because once it goes to the top, as it starts to come down, the velocity vectors here would be pointing down and the acceleration also points down, and when you have velocity and acceleration pointing in the same direction, the object would be speeding up. There's another key thing that's happening here. What happens to the vertical motion at the very top? Well, for an instant of time, in the vertical sense, the object is neither moving up nor down, so along the y-axis, it comes to a rest momentarily. We will see that that's very useful in solving projectile motion problems when we take some examples. Okay, so we can sum up all of this by concluding that the motion along the y-axis over here is a constant acceleration motion, as we have been discussing recently, and the acceleration is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity, and because our positive y-axis points up and acceleration due to gravity points down, ay is minus g. Now let's take a look at what happens along the x-axis. I'm going to remove some of these lines and replace them with lines that guide our eye about the motion along the x-axis, horizontal motion. So what do you see here? Well, we see that the intervals are equal 
all of these intervals are equal. So the ball is moving equal distance in equal amounts of time. So along the x-axis, there is no acceleration. The, the component of g along x-axis is zero. There is no other force acting on it. For now, we're not considering things like friction and air drag. So the motion along the x-axis is simply uniform motion, which can be written as ax equals zero. So just for completeness, I'm putting all of the lines here so you can see how the ball is moving along both the x and y axes. So the steps that are given here are critical in working with projectile motion. First, we got to realize that the motion along the x and y axes are independent of one another. And that helps us in looking at one axis first and the other one later. Let's take a look at the equations of motion and see if we can uh, put this in context. So here are the equations of constant acceleration motion that we have been working with. So let's see what these look like for the x-axis, and then we'll look at it for the y-axis as well. Well, for the x-axis, ax is simply zero. And so that gives us vfx from the second equation equals vix plus ax times delta t. And because ax is nothing but zero, this whole term is zero. So this tells us that vf x equals vix, the velocity never changes, which is what uniform motion is. So for the x-axis motion analysis, we don't have to talk in terms of vf and vi. We can simply say there is vx, which is velocity in the x direction, and it doesn't change. This third equation here tells us that delta x is vix times delta t, but since I don't need to talk about vi versus vf, I can just say vx times delta t. And once again, the second term just goes to zero because ax is zero. So this gives us this equation of nothing but distance equals speed times time. Because there is no acceleration, this is the simple equation that we have along the x-axis, which explains it going equal amounts of distance in equal intervals of time. The fourth equation is not relevant in this case. It again will just simply tell us that vf equals vi because ax is zero. Okay, and then along y-axis, the very first equation simply can be written as minus g. Wherever we have a y along the y-axis would simply be minus g. So minus g equals delta v over delta t. The second equation is just a rearrangement of that, which simply says vfy equals viy minus g times delta t. I've just simply plugged in minus g for a y. The third equation gives me delta y, instead of delta x, equals v i y delta t minus one half g delta t squared. And the last equation would give me v f y squared equals v i y squared minus two times g times delta y. So those would be the equations along the y-axis to analyze this motion. Now, some textbooks will give you these equations, and you might think you have more equations to get to know and memorize. I prefer to say that we are still working with our original set of equations here, and we just know, given the context, how to use them for the x-axis as well as for the y-axis. So for tests and all that, I'll give you only these original equations, and you can easily fit them into the specific condition that you're working with. So this slice of physics was all about projectile motion which acts along both the x and y axes. And importantly, the motion along x and y axes are independent and can be analyzed separately. Then we saw how the motion along x axis is a simple uniform motion with no acceleration at all. And the motion along y axis was a constant acceleration motion with the acceleration due to gravity acting downward as long as we are near the surface of the Earth. In the next video, we will take a specific example on how to work with projectile motion.